Hello everyone, welcome to Mercury. Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cool double-sided coins. They're multicolor using the Bamboo Lab AMS, and they're really cute just for like Christmas or for gifts overall, and they're really simple to make in Fusion 360 once you figure out how to do it. Um, but without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing we need to do is actually come up with our design. So this is the final design that I've decided on. I'm going to show you how to make this real quick in Adobe Illustrator because that's what I know how to use. Um, so we'll uh, make a new document and that's just going to be 50 millimeters because that's the size of the coin that I want. Then we're going to go to the ellipse tool and we'll go right around the center, hold alt and shift to make it into a perfect circle. Then we can use this align uh, panel to align it to the artboard. If you don't have that, you just go to Window and Align, make sure that's checked. Um, and then what we can do is hold Alt and Shift to make this the same size as our artboard perfectly. And one of the things you have to know about importing designs from Illustrator into Fusion 360 is that this stroke will not carry over. It'll just be an infinitely thin line. So what you have to do is you have to change it from having a stroke uh, so like that to having a fill uh, but this is obviously not the same thing so what I will do is I will go to object uh, path offset path and I'm going to set this to minus two millimeters and click OK then if I go back to the selection tool hold shift to select both of the shapes and go to our shape builder tool you can click on this outline and now, if we click out of here, we can delete the inner circles, and we're left with this outline that looks like we have a stroke, but it's not a stroke. Anyway, we will do this exact same thing, but for the purposes of the demonstration, I'll just duplicate that by holding Alt, and we'll make that a little bit smaller. And then for the curved text, this is a little bit tricky, but it's we'll get through it. Let's see, so we'll start with another ellipse. We'll hold down Alt and Shift. We just want to eyeball it so it's about halfway in between the two circles. And then uh, let's just get rid of the fill. Then we're going to go to the text tool, right click on it, and go to type on a path. Then we can click anywhere basically on here, and we can type in whatever we want. So I'm going to type in one free. Um, and then we can use the direct selection tool to move these little handlebars around. First, I'm going to change it so that uh, the text is aligned to the center. And then I'll move this. You know that it is, you know that you're going to be able to move this this handlebar because the your cursor will have this little line with a arrow on it. And now we can move that. That's not the one I wanted to move. This one. just like that. And then we're going to go to the type options. We're going to type on a path, type on a path options. We're going to align to the center and click OK. And now we can make the text a little bit bigger and bold it. Um, one of the things though is that we need to increase the line spacing or the spacing in between the characters. So hold alt and then press your right arrow key and that will increase the spacing between the characters. Click out of that, and now we can hold Alt and drag this over to make a duplicate. What we will do is we'll go back to our type options, so type on a path, type on a path options, click flip, and OK. And now it is upside down. So we can use our selection tool, hold Shift to rotate it, and now we can align this to our artboard again. And now you have your text, and I'll just change that to... Uh, 3D print. Oops. <laughs> I cannot type today. Anyway, here we go. And now for the star, same thing. We'll just hold Alt and Shift to make our star. And then we'll use this uh, direct selection tool to add a bevel to the star. And then we can hold Alt and Shift again to drag this over. And there you have your design. Uh, one of the things, though, another thing that you have to do before importing it into Fusion 360 is you have to go over to your text and with your selection tool, 
right click on your text and create outlines. And we'll do that with the bottom text as well. Right click, create outlines. And this just makes it so that, so that Fusion 360 can actually see the text. Otherwise, it'll just be blank. Now what we can do is we can file, export, export as, and we want to save this as a DXF file. So I'm going to call this uh, one free print coin to uh, tutorial. There we go. And for the artwork scale, this is pretty important. Make sure that this is set to millimeters. Um, and then you can leave all of these options the same. Click OK. We have that exported. And now we can hop into Fusion 360. And first, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new sketch. And then we're going to import our DXF. So you go insert, insert DXF, click on there, select from my computer, and then we'll grab that. And this is the head side of our coin. I'm just going to move it over to the center. So I'm just going to move it 25 uh, to the left and then up. We click OK. And there we have our... Uh, DXF file loaded into Fusion 360. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to finish this sketch. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to deselect these outer rings. And then I'm going to extrude this. And the distance I'm going to do is negative one just so I want it to be backwards. So the sketch is still on the front side, uh, but I want it to be one millimeter thick and click OK. Then we're going to go back into our sketches, turn our sketch back on because we still need that. Then what we have to do is extrude the negative of the text for the front side. So we'll go back to extrude and we're just going to click on everything that is not the text. So we'll click on that and like all these little pieces on the inside we want to include. And then I'm just considering the stars part of the text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this as a distance of one. And we want the operation to be join and it's going to automatically select that. So we'll click OK. And now what we want to do is we want to do the inset text. So this is going to be actually dual color. So what we have to do now is go back to our extrude tool. We're going to select all the text that we want to be our different color. I'm selecting all the text and all the stars. And then I'm going to extrude that one millimeter and it sets the operation to join. But because we're wanting to make this a dual color model, we are going to change this from join to new component. And then we'll click OK. And so now we have this component one right here. So we can double click on that and we can change the name of this to heads text because uh, that's the head side of our coin and that's the text for it. Um, and now we can work on the back side of our coin. So if we just um, move over to the back side um, onto the bottom, I'm gonna actually flip it upside down because on real coins, like the heads and tails are flipped 180 degrees. Um, but now that we're on the back side, we can hide our original sketch. So we'll go here on the bottom. We'll do new sketch and then we want to select this bottom plane and now we can insert our DXF file. I only want that top layer and now it's in the correct orientation. So sometimes you just have to play around with it a little bit. But we got that moved up. And now we have to do basically the same thing um, that we did before. So I'm going to extrude all of the negative text. So this piece here and all these little floating islands inside. And I'm going to do that uh, extrude by one and the operation is going to be join this time. Click OK. And now uh, we want to show that sketch again. And now what we want to do is get all of our text. So uh, we might actually not need this. So we can just, oops extrude all of our text here. We'll do one millimeter and the operation this time has to be new component because this is the tails text and it's going to be a different color. So we're going to do new component, click OK. 
Now we have component two, so we're gonna, just gonna double click on that and rename that to tails text. Perfect. And now all we have to do is figure out what we wanna do with the center and the outside ring. So what I wanna do is I wanna make the center and the outside rings the same color as the text. Um, but then I also want to leave a hole in the middle of the coin. So I'm not going to extrude anything in the middle. I'm just going to leave it empty. So it is kind of like a donut shape. Um, so what we want to do now is we will extrude. And we have our second sketch uh, visible. We're going to select these two rings. And now we want to... This is going to be a little bit more complicated than our basic extrude. We're going to set the direction to two sides. And the extent type for both of these is going to be two object. So we're going to select two object. And we want to select this top face for the first part. And then for, ex, uh, for side number two, the extent two object, we're going to want to go to the bottom face. And basically all this does is it makes sure that the extrude goes from the entire bottom to the top of the entire coin and not just have half of the coin have a border around it um, and what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to do new component and click ok and that's component three we'll name that to rings and there we have it so this is basically done we can hide our last sketch um, and if you want to change the appearance inside of Fusion 360, I don't know a really good way of doing this, except for um, if you maybe right click on here and go to appearance, then this tab comes up. I like to go into the paint section and I can just uh, drag this on here. So for the heads and tails text, I'll do black. And for the rings, I'll do black. And then the last part, uh, the body one, uh, maybe blue, I don't know. Um, but here we go. So now we have it. And if you want to do a different color for the bottom text or something, you can obviously do that. So this is tails text. And I'll just, just change that to green. So now the one side is black, the other side is green. Uh, but let's m export these into Bamboo Studio so we can 3D print them out. So we'll first we'll rename this body one to uh, insert or inner. call it coin inner and I'm just going to rename all of these because I already have something called uh, heads text and tails text so I'll do coin heads text coin tails text and coin rings and now all we have to do is right click save as mesh click OK and save those Right click, save as mesh, OK, save, and it crashed. <laughs> All right, right click, save as mesh, OK, save, right click, oops, right click, save as mesh, OK, save. Here we go. Now we can hop into Bamboo Studio, and we can... Uh, make this new project. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select all of these. So hold shift. We'll click the first one. Hold shift. Select the last one. Click open. And it's going to ask you, do you want to load these files as a single object with multiple parts? Click yes. And basically that aligns all of the objects for you. So you don't have to do anything. So now we can go into the objects viewer and we can change um, the inner color to uh, whatever. I'm actually going to sync uh, with my AMS, um, and that actually looks pretty good. One more quick thing before we get printing is that you do generally want to change the wall generator from classic to Arachne, uh, just because we're dealing with text and like little small details. Um, we want Arachne because it can vary the line width um, more dynamically than the standard slicing engine, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it works. Um, anyway, here we have the finished sheet code. So now we can go ahead and print it. So here we have the final prints. I think they turned out really cute. I really love how they turned out. Um, if you do have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to as many as I can. Uh, but with that out of the way, happy printing!